Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. Earlier this month I went on a work trip to St. Louis. So of course I had to go to the Gateway Arch. Now I didn't see any monsters or demigods. At least I don't think so. Mist might have been working on me. But what I did notice were some differences between what we read about the Gateway Arch in The Lightning Thief and what I experienced when I actually went to the Gateway Arch. Now, maybe with the upcoming Disney Plus show, we will get a few updates and changes to account for the differences between what is portrayed in the book The Lightning Thief and what you would actually see if you visited the Arch in St. Louis. But until then, let's talk about some of the differences and some things that were pretty spot on between The Lightning Thief and the actual Gateway Arch. Before we begin, as a huge disclaimer, the museum underneath the arch did get some major renovations in 2018, which if you've been watching my timeline series, you would know that, that definitely was not when Percy, Annabeth, and Grover visited the arch. So I won't focus too much on any differences between the current museum and the museum that was described in the book as it would have been different. They added quite a bit to the museum in that 2018 renovation. But I will say, even though it doesn't really look or feel like you're underground, you are technically in the basement. So Grover having issues smelling monsters because monsters smell like underground and they're underground does hold quite a bit of weight to it. Although that's not where it smelled like underground to me. But of course, I'm not a satyr. Now, first things first, you do have to pay to go to the top of the arch. You can't just get on the elevator and go up. Percy, Annabeth, and Grover did lose all of their stuff in the unfortunate bus incident in New Jersey and had some reward money for finding the lost poodle. They could have had enough money to go to the top, we just don't see them paying for the ticket. So was this a great use of any leftover funds that they had? They are 12 years old, so I will give them a pass on that spending the money to go to the top of the arch. It's just not spoken about. Maybe narrator Percy just didn't think it was important or Annabeth did it on her own and didn't tell Percy and Grover. Either way, they would have had to pay to go to the viewing area. And now we're gonna get into the big differences between what you will experience at the arch and what narrator Percy tells us he experienced. And let's start with the elevator trip up. Now, in The Lightning Thief, narrator Percy mentions how they were ushered, quote, onto a tiny little elevator car. And Percy mentions that he's in trouble because he hates confined spaces. It is, in fact, a very confined space. The elevator is almost egg-shaped or rounded. And where I was sitting on the way up, I actually couldn't sit upright. I kind of had to crouch down. The ride back down, I sat in a different seat where I had a little bit more headroom, so was able to sit up all the way, but it's a very confined space. Now, when I went to the arch, there was plenty of room, not too many people were going up at the same time, so I only had two people in my group and we were able to get on our own elevator car. We didn't have to share with anybody. They do break you up into groups to get on this almost tram-like Ferris wheel elevator up to the top. So having an additional person and dog put into the elevator with Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, I can buy that. Did Percy mention that there wasn't much of a line because it was near the end of the day? Yes. It kind of makes it a little bit difficult for them to have been placed with a stranger. There was somebody on in our group who was by themselves and they did get put in their own car. I will say that the description from Percy 
of the observation deck seemed fine to me. Percy isn't super descriptive here, just saying that, quote, the observation deck reminded me of a tin can with carpeting. Rows of tiny windows looked out over the city on one side and the river on the other, which technically is an accurate description. I will say the windows were much tinier than I was expecting, and you also almost have to lean over, basically laying your front half down in order to look out the windows, which was kind of terrifying, if I am to be completely honest. Not as terrifying as the time I went to the Sears Tower, Willis Tower in Chicago. I didn't know I was afraid of heights until then. Now, here's where we are going to get to a few pretty major differences between what is described in The Lightning Thief and what you would actually experience on the observation deck of the Gateway Arch. Now, Percy mentions that Annabeth would have loved to stay up there for hours, but the deck was about to close. This could just be hyperbole from Percy. I'm not going to put a ton of stock in it. However, you really only get about seven minutes on the observation deck, which is enough time for the elevator cars to go back down the arch and come back up. It takes three-ish minutes to go down and about four minutes to make the truck up. They switch out groups with every elevator pass, so every seven minutes you are switching out groups. So a group will go up in the cars. I believe there was eight or nine cars that would come up at a time and then go down, so you'd have the individuals coming up. You get the idea. Now, possibly if you were the very last group of the evening, you might have a little bit more time on the observation deck. We were not the last group of the day. We were pretty late in the day. So I can't comment on if there was a way that Percy, Annabeth, and Grover could have had a little extra time. But in general, you've got seven minutes. And maybe that did seem like hours to Percy. Next, we get to Percy not being able to get on the elevator with Grover and Annabeth. Now, as I said previously, there is a group of cars that all go up and down at the same time. Again, kind of like a Ferris wheel. So there's the first discrepancy. But the second discrepancy is in The Lightning Thief, Percy mentions that he was stopped because there were two people already in the car. So then Grover and Annabeth would have made four. Each one of these cars holds five people. Percy could have gotten on the car. The second issue with this is that we were assigned cars on the way up and the way back down. So you would be with the same group of people in the same car for both trips. In reality, Percy should have been on the car with Annabeth, Grover, and Echidna rather than being stopped because there were two other people in the elevator. Now, I'm sure there is a world in which you would get into a different car on the way back down. Maybe there was a delay. Maybe it was a weight issue. Maybe it was the mist or echidna manipulating the park rangers. But we were assigned little numbers and you got back in the same car. Actually, I don't know if it was the exact same car. It was the same number and it would make sense that it would be the same car because you can't have multiple elevators going up. Yeah, so the same car. And again, Percy being told he needed to wait for the next car, that's not really how it works. There's nine and they're just on a track. So there wouldn't be a next car to wait for. He would just have to get in the next car, like maybe the one next door. Or if they were all full, because for some reason, somebody stayed up longer than they were supposed to and they had to make another full trip, then Percy would be up on the observation deck for another seven minutes because all the cars leave at the same time. Now, the very last thing about the elevators that don't make sense, Percy was stopped from getting into the car with Grover and Annabeth because there were two other people already in the car. 
But then Percy mentions who was left on the observation deck, which would have been the little boy and his parents, Echidna and her dog, and the park ranger, and of course Percy. Now, the park ranger wouldn't have gone back down with the tourists. We had two separate tour guides, one at the bottom, one at the top, when we went. So Percy was stopped from getting on a car because it would be five people, only to be waiting for the next car that would have to have five people. When the elevator's egg things hold five people. That's the exact same amount of people that would have been in the car had Percy gotten into the same car as Grover and Annabeth, but somehow it's fine for him to wait and get on a car with the same amount of people. Again, maybe it's Echidna using the mist, using some magic to get Percy almost alone on the observation deck. She probably would have considered that alone because does she really care about mortals? Eh, probably not. All right, let's talk about the big elephant in the room. The jump from the arch into the Mississippi River. Now I have seen the TikToks where people are standing on the ground, looking up at the arch and saying, I don't think Percy could have made this jump. Well, myself and my coworker, while on the top of the observation deck, took in some, thought about it, did some math. I didn't do any math. I am terrible at the math that this would require, but I was with an engineer, so I'm going to assume that their math was good. So me and my coworker, who's a very good sport about me being excited to go to this tourist attraction, to this national park, because Percy Jackson went there and I was a fan of the books. They were not a fan of the books, had never read them, but we did discuss while we were on the observation deck how yeah, I think he could have made it into the Mississippi River. The thing is, he would have needed a jump. If you factor in that he's a demigod, I think it's plausible. And narrator Percy does mention that he jumped and the giant gaping hole that was made during the attack. So I'm going to go with yes. It is possible. Do I know the jumping strength of a 12 year old demigod? No, we kind of made those numbers up. And by we, I mean my coworker. I didn't do any of this math. But yes, I think Percy would have made it into the Mississippi. The other thing is, um, there weren't really any boats or anything on the Mississippi while we were there. It's also December and it was cold and it was late and it was almost dark. So I'm going to just ignore what he sees in the river and just call it fine. So there you have it. Were there as many differences between the actual Gateway Arch and what was written in The Lightning Thief as you thought? Because I will say I thought there was going to be more glaring differences. I was a little bit surprised. The biggest issue is the elevators. But maybe the Disney Plus show will address that issue. How do you think they would address that discrepancy? Do you think they'd address the discrepancy with the elevators? Also, the worker at the top on the observation deck talked about how excited she was with how many kids were coming to the arch being very excited to learn about it because of the Percy Jackson novels. So have you been to the Gateway Arch because of the Percy Jackson novels? Have you been anywhere else because of the Percy Jackson novels? Should we do other videos like this comparing real places to how they're described in the Rick Riordan novels? I think that would be fun and I would love to do that and I probably will. I'm going to be completely honest, it gives me an excuse to travel, right? But where from the Percy Jackson or other Rick Riordan novels would you like to visit? And where should I try to go next? Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more videos on Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the upcoming Disney Plus series, or the greater Rick Riordan universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.